Hi everyone, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. In the last few tutorials, I have uh, completed the, the topic inflammation in great detail. I think you, you might have seen that videos. If you have not seen, please go back and uh, have a look at those videos. In the next few parts, I will be discussing about the concepts and the various things you need to know about the tissue repair. So this is part one of tissue repair where uh, we will be uh, knowing about the definition of repair and healing. We will know what is regeneration and what is scar formation. We will move on to understand the different types of tissue and then understand the mechanism of tissue regeneration in great detail, taking liver as an example. Okay. Now, whenever there is an injury to a given tissue, what can happen? Okay. One, yes, the inflammation will be there, which helps in warding off the inflammatory agents, the infectious agents, but then it also has to restore the tissue, isn't it? Back to its normal functioning. So restoration of tissue architecture and function after an injury is called as repair. It is also called as healing. So repair and healing are almost synonymous words. But in general, repair is a term used when we talk about restoration of parenchymal and connective tissue. Whereas healing is generally uh, the word used when we talk about restoration of surface epithelium. But then still repair and healing can be interchangeably used. Now, repair occurs via two processes. One, regeneration which means there is restoration of normal cells and two scarring which means there is connective tissue deposition now restoration of normal cells in the case of regeneration occurs only in tissues which have cells with capacity to proliferate whereas Scarring occurs in the tissues where cells don't have the capacity to proliferate. That's one scenario. In the second scenario, even in the tissue where the cells have capacity to proliferate, if that tissue is very severely damaged, the part of the tissue will be uh, replaced by the normal cells, but the remaining part of the tissue will be replaced by connective tissue, and that is scar formation. The scarring can occur in two scenarios. One, in those tissues where cells don't have capacity to proliferate and two if any of the tissue which has uh, which is severely damaged okay now let us understand regeneration and scarring in greater detail some basics about these two entities so the repair process is dependent on few important things one the proliferative capacity of the cells as we already know and two the interaction between these cells and the extracellular matrix okay so the proliferation of cells is again further dependent on i mean they are basically driven by the growth factors whereas the interaction between the cells and extracellular matrix all these things depends on integrity of extracellular matrix as well okay and secondly it also depends that is repair process is also dependent on the development of mature cells by the progenitor cells or the stem cells now, once we know that the cells do proliferate in the process of repair, now we need to understand what are those cells? What are those cell types which proliferate during the repair process? So three important cell types we need to understand. One, the cells, they are, I mean, the remnants of the injured tissue, okay, which tries to attempt to restore to the normal tissue and to the vascular endothelial cells. The vascular endothelial cells proliferation is very important because that is one which creates the blood vessels and the formation of blood vessels is very important for nutrition of the cells during the repair process. The third one is the fibroblasts which essentially form scar. It synthesizes collagen and then it forms scars and then it fills those defects in those tissues where the cells cannot regenerate. Now, the ability of tissues to repair themselves is determined partly by the proliferative capacity of the cells and to presence of stem cells. So remember only these two things, the proliferative capacity of the cells is very important and the presence of stem cells is important for, uh, for us to understand the concepts of tissue repair. So based on these parameters, based on the proliferative capacity of the cells, the tissues in the body are subdivided into three types one labile tissue which are nothing but the continuously dividing tissue and two stable tissue and three permanent tissue the labile tissues are the ones which contain cells which are continuously being lost and replaced 
examples being hematopoietic cells of bone marrow surface epithelia it could be squamous epithelium of your skin it could be cuboidal epithelium of your glands it could be columnar epithelium in the glands transitional epithelium of the urogenital system any epithelium any surface epithelium these are the areas where the cells are continuously being lost and replaced stable tissue is a tissue where there are cells which are quiescent okay they are the cells which are in g0 phase of cell cycle in the earlier videos i have talked about uh, the concepts of cell cycle i think you can go back and look uh, at that particular video to understand the various parts of cell cycle for now know that the stable tissue have cells which are in quiescent phase they have a mini very minimal proliferative activity okay they can proliferate only in response to injury or loss of these cells okay they divide in response to injury or loss examples being parenchyma of solid tissue like the liver the kidney the spleen they could be endothelial cells they could be fibroblasts and smooth muscle cells the permanent uh, tissue are the ones where the cells are terminally differentiated and they are non proliferative in the postnatal life okay examples being neurons the cardiac muscle the skeletal muscle so consider injury to the neuronal tissue that is brain the cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle they do not regenerate okay the injured tissue is replaced by deposition of connective tissue and that is what we call it as scar so basically we have three types of tissue one is labile tissue where the cells are continuously being lost and replaced and two you have stable tissue which is in the quiescent stage and then they assume proliferative capacity they move from g0 to g1 phase in response to injury and loss loss and then the third one is the terminally differentiated cells where they become non proliferative in the postnatal life so these are the three types of tissue you need to understand for us to know better about the tissue regeneration and repair now we know that the cells proliferate right what are those cells which proliferate they are the remnants of the injured tissue the endothelial cells the fibroblasts right all these cells proliferate by signals and what are these signals these signals are provided by the growth factors okay the signals are provided by the growth factors and the extracellular matrix the growth factors are produced by the cells near the sites of damage the growth factors acts as signals for cells to proliferate and these growth factors are produced by the cells near the site of damage and the most important the most predominant cells which synthesizes or produces growth factors are the macrophages and the rest being the epithelial or the stromal cells the extracellular matrix you know what is the role the growth factors which are produced by these cells they are bound to the extracellular matrix proteins okay they provide signals for the cells to proliferate what do they do finally they activate signaling pathways that stimulate dna replication and that's how the cells multiply and the cells divide now let us understand in detail about the tissue regeneration taking liver as an example because liver is an organ which has a remarkable capacity to regenerate so liver regeneration occurs why are two pathways i mean two ways where the liver can be regenerate liver can be restored to normal for example if you knock out part of a liver in the case of partial hepatectomy the remaining part of the liver you no know, starts proliferating okay so one uh, one way the liver can regenerate is by proliferation of remaining hepatocytes and two is repopulation from progenitor cells okay so these are stem cells proliferation of remaining hepatocytes repopulation from progenitor cells so proliferation of remaining hepatocytes occurs in three different phases one is a priming phase two is a growth factor phase and the three is a termination phase let us understand a bit in detail about these phases so what happens in the priming phase is that you have a hepatocyte here once you have a hepatocyte and then you have the kupffer cells which are the macrophages these macrophages secrete interleukin 6 and then makes these cells you know responsive for these growth factors okay how do they become responsive by expressing the receptors on their surface 
okay the receptors for the growth factors one of the example being epidermal growth factor another growth factor being hepatocyte growth factors so this particular phase where the cells are being primed for them to be receptive for the growth factors is referred to as a priming phase now what happens next once these growth factors goes and sits on the receptors okay that is when the cells get signals and then they move from g0 to g1 phase so once the cell enters the cell cycle in the form of entering into the g1 phase of cell cycle the cells proliferate so the hepatocytes proliferate the rest of the hepatocytes start proliferating and this is referred to as a growth factor phase where the cells grows the cells proliferate by the help of these growth factors on the primed hepatocytes okay after achieving a requisite organ size or a tissue size the cell stops proliferating and then these return back to the quiescent stage this is called as termination phase and the factors responsible for the cells to get back to termination phase is by these set of by this transforming growth factor beta family tgf beta family set of proteins now we understood proliferation of remaining hepatocytes liver regeneration occurs by proliferation of remaining hepatocytes by priming phase growth factor phase and termination phase right and the second one if this does not happen the second way the liver can regenerate is by repopulation from the progenitor cells okay so how when does this happen this happens usually after chronic liver injury or after chronic inflammation okay what happens in that condition the proliferative capacity of the hepatocytes is impaired okay so the hepatocytes the native hepatocytes hepatocytes cannot proliferate because it is severely injured okay that is when the progenitor cells comes to play so that is when the progenitor cells helps to repopulate now what are these progenitor cells and where are they located so these are the hepatocytes okay so that's a bile canaliculus that's a bile ductule and that's an intralobular bile duct and this is i mean these are hepatocytes this particular area in between the bile canaliculus and the ductule is called canal of herring where you find these different types of cells these are stem cells this is called a stem cell niche okay so these are the cells these are the progenitor cells which helps in repopulating the liver repopulating the hepatocytes when these hepatocytes are unable to proliferate because of chronic injury okay so that is when repopulation of progenitor cells occurs when the proliferative capacity of the hepatocytes are impaired okay how do they have how do how do that occur how does progenitor cells assimilated but this particular uh, you know mechanism is actually not known this is an area of active investigation as of now so as of now remember regeneration takes place by proliferation of the native cells in the case of liver it is proliferation of remaining hepatocytes if this does not happen if this is impaired because of inflammation or chronic inflammation or whatever reasons the proliferation can also occur by repopulation by progenitor cells okay which are basically stem cells this is the same in almost all the organs we have just understood by taking liver as an example right so this completes today's topic we understood what is repair we understood the basic concepts of regeneration and what is scar formation we talked about the various types of tissue and then in detail about tissue regeneration okay in the next part i will talk about the connective tissue deposition or the scar formation thank you for watching if you have liked this video please hit the like button do comment if you have any queries or if you like this video do comment don't forget to subscribe this channel and then please do share if you find this video useful thank you one and all